not. Then the uh, next item would be to uh, review the uh, WASB resolutions for the state convention in Milwaukee. And um, Mrs. Buswell is our delegate, so she'll be uh, arguing if any for us when we're there. But we did get a list of the resolutions. And um, are you prepared to answer questions, Mrs. Zardin? I certainly am. I, uh, you had two documents. You have the rationale. Um, behind the proposals that were made in the, the uh, document that has the uh, resolutions on them as well. So I don't know if you have specific questions or if you want me to talk generally about some of them. I, um, you know, as I looked through them, uh, a number of them relate to um, having accountability for voucher schools that is similar to public schools. And certainly I think there's um, sound rationale in that. And for those of you that have been paying attention to the news lately, I know there was just an article this week on a Milwaukee private school where they closed up in the middle of the night and are now down in Florida living in a gated community, the husband and wife who are running the private voucher school, and the state is out a couple of million dollars, um, taxpayer money to keep, you know, that was, that was being used to fund that school. Most kids now need to find a different school. So I personally believe that it's extremely critical that there are standards for schools that are going to be receiving taxpayer money mm -hmm. um, that are private schools. Um, the, there are additional um, resolutions in regard to the school year. Um, of course, we made the recommendation on um, allowing a group of school districts to have a start date before September 1st, and the WSB has modified that somewhat just to um, eliminate that provision that school cannot start before September 1st. And there's also um, a resolution related to the days of instruction that um, we focus on the hours of instruction and not the days. I think the only resolution that, as I was looking through these, um, that raise, you know, I, I'm not sure I would recommend um, voting for it is the safety belts on the school buses. And I did speak with Mr. Gorder about that today. I'm, I'm not sure that there's sufficient evidence or research out there that that does improve safety for students. If you've been on a bus, you know that the backs are cushioned and very high that help protect students if, if the brakes are put on quickly. There's been some studies that have shown the seatbelts actually could potentially create more problems if kids aren't using them correctly and they're using them to hit one another. You may need to hire people to monitor to make sure that the kids are wearing them because if you have them on buses and then kids aren't wearing them then there's an accident then who's responsible. So I, I'm not sure that that has been fully How did I, vetted. I, I yeah. question Who's bringing that again? Well, WSB is recommending that. Um, it's just for new school for buses. For new school buses that. I'd be very tentative. Equipped. I'd want to make yeah. sure that the Wisconsin School Bus Association is a supporter of that and even nationally. Um, it will drive up the cost of bus. And not that costs are the beginning or the end, but they certainly factor into every decision. Yeah that we make and, and where we spend our money. And uh, my understanding that at, at this point in time, although there have been you know, some very bad accidents with buses, buses at, at still at this point in time, the way they designed are some of the safest vehicles on the roads. Um, and they have a very good track record. And, and my, really my bigger concern is the, the level of uh, uh, monitoring it would take to ensure that every kid 
is wearing their seat belt and how much additional distraction that would be to the driver when you want them focused on the road. Uh, I can't even begin to fathom how you're going to monitor that unless they have some electronic um, communication device that a light goes on like much in your car that can identify which seat belt yeah. isn't on and, and you know um, we know how difficult it is to to put in our, our, our four and five year olds in our own vehicles to make sure that the seat belt straps are tightened appropriately and so I'm having a tough time with the visualization. Of the tenor Kids could the just deal. snap them and then sit on top. Right, because they say, you know, I mean, I've seen some, uh, you know, more recent studies that your kids are in more danger if you do not have your seat belts strapped in appropriately, or your kids strapped into your car seats appropriately. Um, you know, if they're slack, and, and uh, a recent one just, you know, suggested this, you should not put in a student with a jacket on uh, when you're looking at some of the car seat type of, uh, uh, so it just brings up a whole host of questions that I, I'm really not, I really want more information on that one to say yes to. Um, I had a couple of questions. What, sure. what are they trying to get at uh, first in 14-7 educator effectiveness uh, with respect to limiting projects um, any initiatives that would limit a school board's right to review data? Well, DPI has said that the state model that they are proposing that initially that it not be used for high stakes decisions. So we're going to be starting next year evaluating our teachers based on the Charlotte Danielson model. There will be some student data that is looked at in terms of the development of their SLOs and what the state has been saying, DPI has been saying, don't hire and fire people based on those evaluations at this point. WSB is saying, no, you can look at that data, you know, you can use it to make decisions that um, are important for you, I, I mm -hmm. believe. And an SLO, Cindy, is? Is a student learning objective. So just, just for the yes. public, so that yeah. <laughs> I mean, there so, was there was encouragement not to use it for high stakes things preliminarily while it's sort of being tested, but right. we'd still like access to the data. Yes. Okay. And then fourteen fourteen. What's that sharing of students? What's that getting at? Um, this has become quite popular in Iowa. I think there are a state that has done this a lot, but basically what it allows is that, let's take Sparta and Toma, because we're close to one another. If in Toma, because we have the ACE Academy, if Sparta wanted to send some of their kids here to participate in uh, two hours of instruction as part of the ACE Academy, they could come over here and if, let's say, Sparta had a different program, maybe they had a special academy that focused on uh, fire and police services or something, that we could send the students there. So we would just be sharing students. You don't have to be open and rolling, but you're just, it really is generating more cooperation between districts. It certainly would allow in the northern part of the state where there are um, very small districts that like, occupy large areas of land um, where maybe you'd be looking at coming together for regional high schools um, even down in the Milwaukee area where there's close proximity between schools allowing you know you're sharing students basically okay. without money necessarily transferring from place to place so you're able to keep the student but send them to another school to get a program that you're na not able to offer and that school district reciprocates by sending students to you with a program that you offer that they can't. So that makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, those were the ones that I would have questions about. Um, anyone else? Does anyone want to express any strong opinions again? I mean, the WASB has taken their positions on these, and I guess, again, from your position, Mrs. Zardi, Except maybe, with uh, with the exception of the school bus one, 
you would you generally support the WASD's position on these resolutions? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any strong opinions otherwise. We will have to give Mrs. Buswell her marching orders for purposes of the um, delegation. I don't know if everyone's familiar with that. They vote on these and all the delegates. You've done that, haven't you, Judy? And you can go up to a microphone and speak for or against any of these. So we'd like to sort of, as a board, have a consensus on how we feel about these. I strongly encourage any new board members to do it at some point while you're on the board because it really is an interesting process to do that. So, and it, just go and do your voting. Maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot better when you're on the popular end. I had to do it the resolution. first year. I just, just jump <laughs> in. <laughs> but it is, it is an interesting experience. I was on the yeah. unfavorable end of a resolution last year. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not get up to a microphone. So I mean, you can go and do your voting without having to tell us. <laughs> All right. Anything else with respect to the resolutions? If not, then we move on to the review of the process for a logo design for the district mission. Mr. And I Ma think we I'm put sorry. It. Are you, what do we want to tell Mrs. Buswell oh, then? Okay. I mean, should we tell her that to listen to the arguments made for and against and that typically we're in favor of all of the resolutions other than Except the, the seatbelt seat that perhaps mm -hmm. she can listen to the arguments made for and against and reach a decision based on what she hears. Oh, that's fine with me. We, that's, we've usually given just a general sense and with some sort of flexibility on some things depending on what they hear. She did send an email Yes. saying that she would try to touch base with us. Right. It, when, is it Wednesday morning? Yes. Okay. Sometimes during the, the course of the, the time there, the, a, a resolution can change. They change the verbiage on it, yes. and it can change the whole okay, feel of it. So, yeah, you, you do the amendments, and it's... You, you, gotta be able to you, you have to be able to roll with that part of it, but um, I think for, she's done it enough that she probably will. I didn't have a problem with that. What's that? It's on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, it's Wednesday, Wednesday morning. 30. Oh, well, it says 1.30. Oh, is it in the afternoon? They did change things around a little bit this year. Okay. Program, I think, so. All right. Well, yeah, we can then um, talk to her and tell her we're generally in support of those. Is that enough? Um, I think so, yes. I just... Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay, please, we want to get to the logo. Yeah. 